So now we're on the third slide, and we're going to take a look at some specific examples. For questions 1 through 7, evaluate without a calculator. So in number 1, I'm going to swing, and here's my internal dialog. 2 raised to some power is equal to 8. So 2 to what power is equal to 8? Well, the answer is going to be 3. 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8. Let's go to number 2, and we'll swing again. 5 to some power equals 1 125th. So 5 to some power is equal to 1 over 125. Well, 5 cubed equals 125, but we want 1 over 125, so it's going to be negative 3 in this case. So the answer to this one is going to be negative 3. Let's go to example 3. Our implied base is E. If I do a swing, E to some mystery power is equal to E to the fifth. So E to some mystery power is equal to E to the fifth. What is the mystery power? It's going to be 5. Let's go to number 4. We have an implied base of E. If we do a swing, e to the mystery power, I'll call it x this time, is equal to 1. So e to our mystery power is equal to 1. So our mystery power is going to be 0. Now we're going to use that reflexive property. In number 5, we've got 2 raised to the log 16 base 2. Keep in mind that this value and this base, they're the same. So the answer is just going to be 16. In number 6, there is an implied base of E here. It's going to be hard to make that small. Maybe I'll rewrite it a little bit bigger. So this is E to the ln of 17 base E. And I think the important thing to remember here is that this value E is the same as this base. So the answer is just going to be this number, which is 17. And this next question is a very important one. Uh, our implied base is E, so I'm going to say E to the negative 2 ln 3 base E. But to use this reflexive property rule that I've given you, there can't be any number in front. So what I'm going to use is the power rule or the power ranger rule backwards. And I'm going to write this as E to the ln of 3 to the negative 2 power base E. So again, this prefix or this coefficient negative 2 leaped up and became the exponent of that 3. So this becomes E to the ln of 1 9th base E. And this value is the same as this value, so the answer is just going to be this number here, or 1 9th. And finally, number eight, evaluate with a calculator log of 55 base 7. So 7 to some mystery power, which I'll call x, is equal to 55. 7 to some mystery power is equal to 55. Well, there's no such power that I can just think of off the top of my head. So this is going to require the use of the change of base formula. And remember, I have the choice to use log or natural log. I'll use natural log. It's only two letters instead of three letters. But remember that the base, the base of 7, goes in the basement. So it's the natural log of 55 over the natural log of 7. And if I grab my calculator here, I've got the natural log of 55 divided by the natural log of 7. And I end up getting 2.059. 2.059. Remember on the AP, three decimal places either rounded or truncated. Great job. Let's go on to slide number four. On this slide, I give two examples of solving. In number nine, we're asked to solve six equals e to the x minus one. And there's a couple ways you could do this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by taking the natural log of both sides. The next thing that I'm going to do is focusing on the right hand side, I'm going to use the power rule or the power ranger rule and bring that exponent down in front. But it's going to be critical that I write it inside of parentheses since it's more than one term. 
Now, if I do a quick swing over here, the, the implied base is e. e to what power is equal to e? All of this equals 1. And of course, multiplying by 1 has real no, no real effect. So I'm just going to write it as x minus 1. And my final maneuver will be to add 1 to both sides. So x is equal to 1 plus ln 6, or 1 plus the natural log of 6. So in some cases I make my ln cursive, in other cases I don't. Does that bother anyone? Oh well. So in question number 10 we're asked to solve the natural log of x minus 2 is equal to 5. And we have this implied base of e, so the natural thing to do would be to swing. So I'm going to say e to the fifth is equal to this algebraic chunk. So e to the fifth is equal to x minus 2. And then I'll just simply add 2 to both sides. So x is equal to e to the fifth plus 2. So here are a couple of examples of how solving might appear in this next unit. Let's go on to the final slide. So we're on our last slide here, and we're going to do two problems involving expanding and condensing log expressions. This is, these are very, very important skills as we move through this chapter. So when we're asked to condense, what that really means is to write as a single term. So notice in number 11, we see the word log appear three times. Our goal is to condense this so it only appears one time. And when I'm condensing, the first thing that I like to do is implement the power rule if possible. That is, if there's any number or coefficient in front of the log expression, I like to use the power rule to allow that number to leap up and become the exponent. So I'm going to be able to do that for each of the three terms. And when I do that, I end up getting the natural log of x squared minus the natural log of z to the one-half plus the natural log of 5 cubed. Now the last two terms I can do something with, so I'm going to just modify those a little bit, leaving the first term alone, the natural log of x squared, and now I'm going to write this as the natural log of the square root of z, and I'm going to refer to the last term as the natural log of 125, because 5 cubed is 125. So I still have the word natural log occurring three times. And what I'm going to do is read from left to right and take them two at a time. When I do this, I notice there is a subtraction in between. And a difference of logs comes from a quotient. So I'm going to write the word natural log one time. And my numerator is going to be x squared and my denominator is going to be the square root of z. And then I'm just going to rewrite this last term, the natural log of 125. Now I notice that I have two terms left, but this time they're linked by a plus. And a sum of logs comes from a product. So now I'm going to write the word natural log one time and I'm going to multiply x squared over root z times 125. And this leaves me with 125x squared over root z. So this is the condensed form of the original expression. The word natural log only occurs one time in our answer. Now I'm going to go in the opposite direction in number 12 and I'm going to expand we notice that we've got the log of this big fraction. So the first thing that I'm going to implement is the quotient rule. And I'm going to write this as the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. Now the final term, log w, there's really nothing to do there. But our first expression, we have 100 times x to the 3 halves. So we've got the log of a product, which means I can further expand that into a sum. This will become the log of 100 plus the log of x to the 3 halves minus the log of w. 
if I think about my implied base here, we notice there's no base writ written, so there's an implied base of 10. And if I were to think about this as a Schwing, 10 to what power is 100? This first term here simply turns into the number 2. Moving to the second term, there's one more property that I can implement, and that's the power rule. And that power of 3 halves can jump down in front. And I can write this as 3 halves log x, and then minus log w. So I've effectively expanded number 12 from one occurrence of the word log to actually just two of them because that, that first term just turned into the number two. Anyway, I hope this review has brought back some of the more important facts about logs. And as we move forth in the chapter, you're going to notice that we implement many, if not all of these, along the way. So having a really solid foundation with these is, is very important.